All right, we're on. All right, what's going on, everybody? I, God, I really wanted to make up an SDGC like themed Disney didn't style theme the song on this guy, but I didn't have the time. I'm not that brave, so I decided not to do it. <laughs> but I guarantee, I fucking guarantee you, I'm gonna write something over the weekend. It's gonna be amazing, and I'm gonna sing it every time we start the podcast. You're gonna I pay Julian to write it for you, so it'll be good. I really, I you know, I really <laughs> should. You should write some. I need you to write some lyrics, Julian. I know you're out there. If you could write some lyrics and some words. I would don't, really fucking appreciate no. that. Don't do I, it. I will pay you not to do it. No, 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 I will double no, no, whatever no. he's paying you. No. We, do it. This is going to be a bidding war. <laughs> Julian, make sure you do it to the tune of the Mickey Mouse Club. Okay? Why? No! Yes. That, if I'm, I demand. It, look, if it doesn't happen, I'm ending the podcast forever. How about that? Oh. So we're going to cancel the whole thing. Forever. We need a fucking theme song. Foggy, nice. Foggy will bring the podcast back. Rebecca, John. I am going to do this dressed in a Waluigi outfit. Why are you complaining? Because I, exactly. I might not be there, mostly. Exactly. <laughs> Look, any, at any rate, everybody, welcome to episode 130 of Super Deformed Games Cast, also known as SDGC. I am one of your hosts, uh, John, aka at Mr. Megadev on Twitter. And tonight on the panel, we have the man running the podcast, as always, up in the corner, Derek, my friend. How are you? Doing pretty good, doing pretty good. Just a reminder, I'm 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 bottom right, um, not up in the corner because every every we all see different layouts. Every, 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 they're upper middle. Oh, oh, okay, okay, there, there we go. go. And uh, uh, Rebecca, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing all right. I'm playing a video game that I can't talk about. Well, you're not playing it right now, right? Hey! No, no. Hey! Okay. Ah, right. so oh, there it. Oh. And then. great, Stocky's here. I'm so pleased. <laughs> Like and, and and Finn is here. Finn, I, I'm glad to see that you're not driving and podcasting at the same that, time. I never do that. Why would you even continue no. such a thing? It's, 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 for anybody for anybody new who's watching and, and isn't aware, Finn has been like what four on four separate occasions podcasting and driving at the same time. Don't ever fucking do that again. Fucking uh, drives. And we have we have Justin down at the bottom. Justin, how you doing, my man? I'm good. How are you, John? I'm doing great, and I'm doing great because we have a friend of mine on the podcast tonight. A guest I've been trying to get on. For for a long time now, since since Pax East, he's a super busy guy, and we finally got him, Jake Baldino from Game Ranks. Jake, what's up, my man? Hi guys, uh, thanks for having me. I'm great. We will we'll come back to that by the end of the podcast. We'll see <laughs> we'll see if you're still feeling. That way. <laughs> Just a little check in on that. <laughs> I'm doing bad now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, so Jake, I, I'm, I'm curious, man. Like, oh, he how... started off with a drink. That's the smart thing to no, do. No, 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 no. I told him <laughs> to bring alcohol. I told him to bring alcohol. This is, a, right. this is a drinking podcast. Give me one minute. I'll be right back. Continue. Derek, I'm going to get the whole bottle of water. water. Derek. I need a drink. He's going to get the whole bottle. One. He's going to get the whole bottle. Uh, Ice cold glass of water right here. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's the way to do it. Easy on that shit, Justin. Fucking be careful, dude. Please. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be so hydrated by the end of this show. You are, dude. You're going to get up and use the bathroom like five times. I can already see it. Jake, I'm curious, man. How long have you been with? How long have you been doing game ranks now? Because I've been I've been following game ranks for a couple of years, but I'm I just I realized today that I'm not actually sure how long you guys been at this. Uh, so I got the U I got the blank YouTube channel and started with that four years and like four months ago. Ah, damn, dude! And now you've got what three million subscribers? You you're over four point six million. Four point six. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. Damn. So 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 listen, every one of those subs who might be watching this, if you want, go right over to to this Twitch channel. And hit subscribe. I'm not going to tell you you can't. I'm not going to tell you you should. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm going to leave that to you. But if you want to do that, we we, we encourage that. We're not going to stop you from doing that. Um, Jay, Sharing is caring. It, it, exactly, right? Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, not that I would ever use you to gain a bigger audience here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jake, what are you playing right now, man? Okay. Uh, I'm playing a game I can't talk about. Uh, but I'm also <laughs> oh, too. Aren't we all? No. Uh, man, right now I'm playing Red Dead Online. I'm trying to grind through some of that for a video, and uh, I keep going back to the single player and just kind of dicking around in that world, but now it seems like the multiplayer I can just dick around in the world, so it's kind of like saving it for me. Uh, I've been playing that, and I've been playing Pokemon, like nonstop. I, too, Pokemon. have been on the Pokemon train. As as Rebecca and I did a, a little 30-minute uh, episode about this, uh, just the other week, but I, I got guys and Rebecca especially. I am now a Pokemon fan. Oh, oh we got, we got we him! Are. We did it! I, I, did I, it. I am. We, I, we got him. I we am, got him, boys. So, 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 as somebody who has never played the series before, I am now what, like, I think, like, forty hours into the game. Nice. Um, I'm, I'm about to, I'm, I'm about to hit uh, the Elite Four. 
And uh, and after that, I'm probably gonna go for all 151 Pokemon because I'm fucking uh, hooked. Doing... I'm obsessed with this yeah. game. Yeah. Right. Hey, John, unless you ma become the master of all the Pokemon in Let's Go, then I don't even know what you're doing. Yeah. Look at that what? beautiful Pokemon Special Edition. Oh, you've got oh, the gorgeous, oh, oh, sexy Joy Cons. Oh, I'm that. jealous. Oh, Joy Cons are why I want to steal this one for myself. I bet. They are amazing. Yeah. Oh, they are. Just, damn. Does that belong to Saki? Yeah. I actually, Saki's so like, I, I gotta tell you, so like a Saki, right? Like our mascot Saki, I get it's a sock puppet. I know it's a sock puppet, but I can't help but like think of the actual alcoholic drink every time somebody Saki. says it. Oh, so our every favorite thing was when we went to oh, a Saki, Saki yeah. uh, bar and there's a picture out there of Saki drinking Saki. It's amazing. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. Fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> if I um, recall correctly, doesn't our esteemed guest have his own? I do, yeah. I still got it. it. He's, uh, is that Saki or is that Sock? The son no, of Saki. He's got a, he's got a Saki. Saki. Yeah. What? What one is of his this? offspring, one of his many That's right, Rebecca don't... hasn't been here since we've done that. I don't, don't, tell... don't, I don't even the... understand the Saki joke. Don't explain it now. I don't want to know. There's yeah, no you explanation, don't, you, so it's you fine. Don't know. You, you really, really don't want to know. No, I don't. So, so, but yeah, no, dude, guys, I fucking love Pokemon. I am, I am absolutely in love with this game. And I really hope that uh, the core game coming next year maintains uh, the functionality of the Pokeball controller because I didn't think I was going to like it. And it's still a little hard to control because I got big ass hands, but man, that thing is fun. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is fun. Hands. I've got meat hooks, but I feel dumb, running. but I use it anyway. Like, yeah, so do I. Like, well, like, and I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, the first time I was, I was using it, like, you know, like I can hear my wife coming downstairs and, you know, she's, she's like, walking <laughs> in. I, I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> With the Pokeball, she comes in just as I'm doing it, and I'm like, "Look, don't fucking judge me, okay?" Like, don't. Hey, I want to be a Pokemon master. I want to be the very best, like no one ever was. All right, leave me alone. That's I'm, I'm trying, but yeah, dude, that game is fucking amazing. What was that, Finn? The real question for you is, what's your favorite Eevee evolution? Mm. I don't use Eevee at all. <gasps> yeah, put Eevee in the garbage. Yeah, Eevee's yeah. Eevee can't evolve. So, so here's the thing about Eevee. I, I found that the game for the first three hours was way too easy because Eevee is basically a nuclear weapon. Um, and so I shelved Eevee and I just used like other Pokemon I can evolve and I found mm -hmm. the game that really made the challenge of the game That's a true fun. Pokemon experience. Yes, that's, I want to be a fu I'm like you Jake I want to be a fucking Pokemon master. I want to yeah. be I want to be a master trainer. Okay, that's what I want to do And and I don't jive with no fucking uh, uh, cheat wind shit like uh, Eevee on my shoulder That's not how I truck. Okay, <laughs> can so. we can we put that on a bumper sticker? I don't jive with no fucking Eevee <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if somebody could, if somebody in chat could could write that down and get a trademark for me, I would uh, I would really appreciate that. Okay, so we've got a lot to talk about tonight, um, and I thought we oh would boy. start off with uh, I don't know, I'll leave it to you guys. So two big topics. Uh, do you guys want to start with uh, Red Dead Online's um, horse insurance stuff, or or uh, do we want to start with Bethesda? And what's been going on with Fallout 7? Let's start with Bethesda. Oh. You want to start with Bethesda? Let's okay. start with Bethesda. There's, there's a lot, stuff out of there's a lot yeah. there. There's, there's a lot. So, yep, there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Um, so I've got a story up from uh, from Forbes, right? Uh, and uh, I want to give them credit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote what it says here. Uh, and I, I, for what it's worth, I agree with all of this. It says, Fallout 76 is a unique disaster in the gaming industry. A huge game based on a huge IP that took years to craft and yet its arrival has been marked by some of the lowest critic and user scores in modern gaming history. While Bethesda has often given, been given free passes for buggy titles, Fallout 76 has taken things to a new level on that front, and its technical issues are compounded by the core design problems of a multiplayer survivalist Fallout experience few people asked for, or if they did, this is definitely not what they had in mind. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and yet we have heard practically nothing from Bethesda about the historically rough state Fallout 76 has launched in. We've had one giant 47 gigabyte patch meant to fix at least some of the worst bugs, but plenty remain. And playing the game as recently as an hour ago, I still can't start it without a frame rate drop that lasts about a full eight seconds before letting me continue. Mm. And of course, this has all gone on with, with not a lot of feedback from Bethesda, right? But there's also... The whole thing is compounded by this uh, this issue surrounding the the what is it the two hundred dollars special edition of the game that comes with a um, a power armor helmet and what is supposed to be a canvas bag. So 
So, mm. so, so let's break this down. Oh, right? So I haven't heard about the canvas bag thing. I've only seen jokes oh, about it. So. Okay. And wait. Oh, but can it's a, a Bethesda fuck up. So can, I'm prepared for some. Can I? Some can I beauty. please describe this to Derek? So, so hold on, real quick, uh, Justin. I, I want to make sure. Uh, 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 Jake, are you are you spun up on the whole canvas bag deal? Like, are you? Yeah, I uh, I own the I own the Power Armor edition and everything. I bought oh, my so own money. The, oh, so. oh man. <laughs> yep, so, I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. This is near and dear to your heart, then. How do you okay. fuck yeah. up a canvas bag? What could well, have gone wrong? Oh, Justin, well, well. Justin uh, is going to tell us. Well, okay, there's also two issues with the collector's edition. Uh, one of them has been a bit less publicized than the canvas bag, but it got delayed for quality. Um, so a lot of the people that pre-ordered the, um, the collector's edition were given digital codes so they could play the game at launch, mm -hmm. but they weren't getting the physical items uh Un until just this week, which is why, um, which is why it kind of took a while for this to come out, um, because they delayed it to ensure quality. The um, canvas bag that was pictured—it was just a typical canvas bag—came uh, made out of nylon, <laughs> and it straight up looks like a garbage bag. It <laughs> looks like they wrap the power um, power armor helmet in a garbage bag so, and sold it for $200. There are, there are only two fucking words in the term canvas bag. There's two fucking words. And then and one and then, of them is canvas! So, are you saying you didn't see the asterisks next to canvas that said only in case we don't have to pay too much to make it? So, so, so yes, hold on. So, hold on. Just so just somebody... Really hold on, somebody, real, real course, quick, Justin, real quick, before you go any further, I've got a quite, real quick question for Jake. Jake, you have the bag. Does it or does it not look like a fucking bag that you carry wine in a total wine? <laughs> like, uh, I don't... All right, so here, here I come. Here comes Uncle Jake, the fence sitter. Uh, but it's not that big of... Like, it's not that bad. I also didn't know it came with a bag. I pre-ordered it. <laughs> oh, okay. For the, so, so I that's focused fair. on the that's helmet. Fair. I was focused on the helmet, so I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it came with See, a bag. And then I was like... Oh, I guess the bag's kind of shitty. Okay. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, <laughs> Do you have not... this bag on hand? Can we see I it? I don't. I have it in the office. I in the grand I... scheme of things, uh, this is no massive outrage. Like, it's no. a bag that most people getting it probably so, didn't care about. But I think... also, how? Yeah. It's <laughs> not as bad as, like, the... What, what was that game? And I'm... I'm sounding like an idiot here. What was the game where it was supposed to come with like the five rainbow colored crystals? Oh, the oh it was Marvel's Capcom, Marvel 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 Infinite. Infinite. Capcom yeah. Infinite. Right. And the it stones, was supposed to come with yeah. the Infinity Stones and they're just right, like yeah. Easter eggs. Yeah. 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 Or the Estus Flask that was supposed yep. to come with Dark Souls. Yep. Or yes. oh, don't yeah. remind, don't, don't worry, that's still painful. No, there's like a long history of no, collector's so, editions having shit in them. Right. Yeah, there is. Um, that's why you never get them. <laughs> and it's, and it's also just a Steelbook. That's my. Steelbooks are good. Same. I'm, I'm a big fan of steelbooks. Yeah. But I bet the steelbook but... isn't even made of real steel. Yeah, it's got two words in it. <laughs> Aluminium. Oh, no, I, 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 I would like to ask Jake. So like, like, I, I, is the, how's the power? Uh, how's the power armor helmet? Is That's that the thing. Like it's bumming gold me gold out gold. because the power armor helmet uh, is incredible. It's so awesome. I, it, I literally have no room for it in my house. It's that big, but, which kind of makes me sad because I have to keep it in the box. But it's it? so damn cool. You can absolutely wear it. Uh, it's adjustable. It has a voice changer, like a Darth Vader helmet would have. Oh, um, that's it's, awesome. The little, the little headlamp lights up. The problem is, is that it's just surrounded by a game that's kind of not that great. And I think the bag thing is really a perfect storm for the fact that people are already rightly not happy or not satisfied with the game. The the, the bag was kind of just like the, the extra... F yeah, you. so you and, rub people the so, wrong way, I think. And also, the thing that really annoyed people is the customer service response. If that's yeah. true, yeah, that's, that's true. true. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, so there's there's two parts to this as well, um, because there it seems like with this game, there's not just a single part to any of the uh, <laughs> issues surrounding it. Yeah. Um, somebody allegedly contacted customer service, and they got a response saying it was just too expensive to do a canvas bag we don't plan on doing anything about it that was the response literal they, the literal response they got just okay. straight up we do not plan on doing anything about it and that's it. why I, I doubt it's it's true yeah. I, that's I, too bizarre. I cannot yeah. believe that that would actually be put out as in I, I genuinely don't know that I can believe that that's real that's 
So, so we just have a screenshot of this or something? Yes, there is a screenshot like, of it. That's all it is is a screenshot. And yeah. so, uh, that's easy doctors. to fake, I mean. But Bethesda did yeah. say they were investigating it um, and apologized for the response that they got. What? We don't know. I don't know what they, you know, if they were able to confirm whether it was real or not. But then they did respond later that night saying that everybody that got the collector's edition would be getting... Um, 500 atoms, which is the premium currency for the oh, game. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And then people did the breakdown of what you can purchase with 500 atoms. Not much. Uh, yeah, like, what somebody it, like said a it's, it's a, a wooden door. It's a wooden door and some flowers. Um, and if you wanted to get a canvas bag in the game, that's actually mm -hmm. 700 atoms. So funny. it's not yeah. even enough to buy an in-game canvas bag. <sighs> I, and I don't want to divert the conversation from Fallout 76, but Bethesda is not having a good week. I would like to point out that the Elder Scrolls Blades got delayed today, officially announced. Oh, I didn't know um, that. Damn. Yeah, that was supposed to come out in fall of this year, and apparently it's coming out in early 2019. So, so I don't want to divert to that, no, but Bethesda is just having and a that's not great news, but at the same time, it shouldn't be, like the end of the world because a game getting delayed means it needs to get delayed right like you think right. with fallout 76 people should learn like huh maybe something get, getting delayed yeah mm, is a right, but it's, also, it's yeah. also kind of an indicator of bethesda having communication problems because the yeah. game was supposed to, i mean we're at the very end of we are at the very end of the official fall of 2018 like the game we all knew the game was not coming out in fall of 2018 but that's just said anything about it. is it yeah. weird to think that that's probably the best thing that could have happened for Bethesda? Yeah. Because hear me out, even no, though I, mean, I, I, I agree because especially when you're know that these are different teams that are working on Fallout 76 and Blade. But if Blade came out, can you imagine the people just complaining? Yep. Oh, look at all these resources. It'd be the Diablo uh, Immortal scenario where yeah. Fallout 76 is in, is in this state, but you're spending all this time on Blades. So I think it not coming out right now in the hailstorm of 76 tra uh, tragedy that it's probably for the best for the company. So let's, so I, I've actually got a question for Jake real quick. Um, this, this is something I've been wondering about. And um, Jake, do you think that if Fallout 76 were like a 90 Metacritic game, do you think the bag would have been just like a fucking drop in the bucket? Do, do, do you think it would have been like, okay, well, yeah, the bag sucks, but whatever, Bethesda, like the game is great. So, or, or, or do you think that, do you, do, you, do you think that a lot of this is simply because the game is just not very good and People are people are going to be people are going to be angrier about something that gets fucked up in a special edition. What from from what I can see, at least from like when I saw it like bubbling up on Reddit and stuff, it seemed like there were people that genuinely were looking forward to the bag, which wow. I can't relate to. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I can I can I get it. Okay, like cool. The bag looked cool as hell, I guess, in the picture. Um, but I I do think it has taken form to be much more just because like it's gone viral it's rolled into a huge thing just because the game a lot of people aren't happy with it you know it also it might be possible that were the game solid bethesda might have had a more uh kind response to the bag problem perhaps right now they have a lot on their plate just trying to fix the name they're all game. weathered right now they're like whatever shut up fuck uh, like yeah it's a bag leave us alone <laughs> i mean i know it's different like groups of people who are working on each thing but yeah yeah, I, I've actually just been, you know, kind of keeping track of the Fallout 76 uh, situation in general. And I actually did some uh, research of my own just on, you know, just standard Metacritic scores for, like, tentpole AAA releases. It's not the, good. The only one that I could find that was even in the same, like, same, like, level as Fallout 76 is Medal of Honor Warfighter at a 55 <sighs> Which is higher than Fallout 76's. Um, and which it's was Metal Honor was, Warfighter. Yeah, which, <laughs> I had to review that game. Uh, <laughs> Fallout, <laughs> Fallout 76, like when I, when I looked at this, was at a 46 um, on Metacritic. Which, like, I mean, that's right to hell just, retribution territory, right yeah, there. Yeah, like, like the only other game that I think Bethesda has published that's in that level is um, that one. Oh, I'm. Uh, was Rogue it Warrior? Rogue, Rogue, Rogue Warrior, Warrior, yes. Rogue Warrior, which was a terrible um, The box art was cool. The box yeah, art it's... was dope, but... <laughs> yeah. like, but, but, you know, the hey. situation, like, it's, like, I'm not I'm not much of a Fallout fan um, myself, so, like, I'm just kind of looking at this from an outsider, and it's kind of crazy that it released in the state it did, um, mm -hmm. especially with them having put out that statement um, before the beta saying you're gonna see some crazy bugs and it's going to extend into the final release and stuff like they 
told so, us it wasn't going to be good, so, and then didn't delay it. Like, it seems like, like a lot of the safety nets that these companies have in place, you know, to protect their tentpole um, franchises and brands kind of failed in this case. And I'm really kind of fascinated to see what happened behind the scenes there. Well, well so, so, so let's talk yeah. about that, right? And, and we'll just go around the panel. We'll start with Jake, uh, since he's our guest. Um, so, so yeah, uh, Fallout 76 was not received very well. I have not played it. And mm -hmm. based upon what I've heard, I have no desire to play it. Um, do we think that this is going to damage the Fallout brand as a whole? Um, because apparently the game isn't selling very well. It, it, was, it was discounted, what, 20 bucks a week after release? 30. 30? Yeah. 30? Jesus. Uh, so discount of 30 bucks. Um, I, I just, and this is just anecdotal, but I know a couple hardcore Fallout fans who have refused to touch the game. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Jake, I don't know, man. What do you think this means for the Fallout brand uh, going forward? A, a part of me thinks that it's uh, Fallout is going to be fine just because this one is clearly, clearly very much like, oh, the different Fallout game. Because I yeah. feel like Fallout in terms of audience size is, is starting to get up there in terms of mainstream where, like, my cousin who barely plays games or my grandmother like knows what skyrim is yeah i feel like fallout is like slowly creeping up to those territories uh, especially with just how recognizable it is with like the vault boy and and the blue and yellow and all that stuff um so i think for a lot of those people uh they might see it as oh there was the online one and that one wasn't that good um because that's how i see it really like i you know put all the issues the game has content wise and and bug wise aside my problem with it was that I was like, even if the game was kind of perfect, this isn't the type of Fallout game I want to play. So I think there might, I'm hoping there's other people out there thinking like that, that are still going to try the Fallout 5, because I'm still looking forward to the Fallout 5 or, you know, whatever it might be. So, I, like, I don't know, from what I've heard, I was a huge fan of Fallout 4. Like, I loved mm -hmm. Fallout 4. I mean, I loved, I loved 3 and 4. I, I love big, you know, open world Bethesda games, you know, jank and all. Like, I don't really mind the jank but yeah but i think that that wall street article uh or if i'm sorry forbes article wall street jesus who the fuck am i thinking wall street um i think that forbes article really hit the nail on the head when it said this wasn't a game that a lot of fallout fans were asking for in fact i don't think it no. was a game that any fallout yeah. fans were asking for um plus it's early it's like it's closer to early access and i think it would have gone way softer if it marketed itself yeah. as much as i think there's too yeah. much of that out right now i feel like they they would have done themselves a little bit of a service if it was like hey this is an early access game because you could tell they tried to distance themselves a little bit before the game was releasing they put out that letter and they said hey look we're working on this game we're trying new things it's going to be a little messy and uh yeah it seemed to be the case once the game released which is upsetting because like i do feel like there's a part of like you know the team the team that made the game wanted to make this game you know like they wanted to try an online fallout so it's it is a bummer when it's, it's, i still think the core idea could have been a really big deal if yeah. it had been pulled off well. I like as much as people, you know, didn't, you know, knee jerk reaction was not really wanting it. I still think like if they had created like a really solid co op Fallout experience, it could have been huge. Yeah. I, yeah. It's even like I, I had a little bit of a realization today when I was playing Red Dead Online, where Red Dead Online, at least in my experience, was kind of, you know, buggy and glitchy still. It's very much in beta, but. I was playing it and I'm like, oh shit, like this retains why I played Red Dead single player and brings it into multiplayer and just kind of like there's other goofballs walking around. Uh, whereas, you know, Fallout lost that charm, the characters, the storytelling, a lot of that stuff. And that, that's what did it. Well, and what's, what's really bumming for me, and then I want to throw it to Derek and Rebecca and Finn, is, is that there was, a, there was a really positive online community here that you don't really see very often. In a lot of online games, like characters pretending to be NPCs and helping, you know, handing out beers and I handing out that. weapons and mods. Yeah. Like, that's so cool. And you never see that kind of cooperation in games like this. Like people just like, you know, people snipe you and shit and, and troll you and, you know, camp your body. But in this, people are actually actively working together to help each other. And it's really just such a shame to me that that's not encapsulated in the framework of a, of a better game. What? One of my favorite little stories um, like that is somebody said, you know, they came upon a high level player that was just like kind of standing there glaring at them. And then he just waved, gave them 56 grenades and then left. <laughs> <laughs> I love stuff like that. Was he a member of the NRA? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, uh, Derek, Rebecca, and Finn. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you, you guys, I mean, what do you guys think this means for the, for the future of, uh, of the Fallout franchise? If anything at all. 
We had an interesting, and I think this, we already talked about this a couple weeks ago. I think when we still like weren't sure what this was going to be, like before it had officially released. Um, but I, I think maybe it won't damage the Fallout brand irreparably. But I think I think Bethesda is slowly eroding some of their goodwill that they built up with Skyrim and other games like that. Like there seems to be a general impression of Bethesda on the whole. Yeah, Bethesda developed games. We we talked about the distinction last time. Yeah. Games that they develop in house, the games they publish are usually really good. Um, but games that they develop in house tend to be kind of janky, kind of buggy. They have some weird shit going on at launch. Like Fallout Four was, you know, regarded well, but it also, you know, it wasn't it wasn't Fallout New Vegas. It wasn't Fallout Three. Um, it wasn't quite. It didn't quite live up to the hype. And I just I wonder if this is kind of like a heavier blow um, to the trust in Bethesda. And I wonder if they're going to have to work a little bit harder in the future to try to win people over for new titles just across all of their franchises. I mean. Elder Scrolls 6 sounds really great, and I think people are going to be super excited about it, but I think we're also going to be asking a lot of questions of, when this releases, is it really going to be ready? Well, um, and then the other thing that goes with that is, I am very interested to see if a year from now Bethesda can turn this around. Kind of hmm. like yeah, No Man's Sky or anything question. else. Yeah. Is Bethesda going to be more of an EA, or is Bethesda going to be more of an Ubisoft? Are they going to turn, is a year from now Fallout 76 going to be completely unrecognizable, and in a good way, or are they going to just cut ties and and be like, well, we tried. Uh, but to the original question of what this means for Fallout and Bethesda as a whole, I think Rebecca kind of nailed it. it. It's it's no longer Beth uh, Bethesda game no longer gets that free pass. We will still be really excited, but now there's going to be that level of doubt. It reminds me a lot of Bioware, where before mm -hmm. they were the yeah. the gamer darling and mm -hmm. they could do no wrong until suddenly they did. And now every Bioware release, like Anthem, is being judged because of Andromeda. There's and a lot of scrutiny around that game. That's a good analogy, Finn. Yeah. Versus uh, before when Andromeda was coming out and everyone was really excited up until the memes and whatever. But it's going to be like that with Bethesda's next reveal. It's just going to be looked at through the lens of Fallout 76 and not at the lens of Skyrim, if we're talking about Elder Scrolls. Starfield's the big uh, worry. We don't know what to compare that to, so all we can go off is, is their previous release, which is 76, even though they're different teams. And I, I think also people are going to be really scrutinizing um, a lot of the marketing statements from Bethesda from now on. Um, like, at E3 this year, um, you know, uh, Todd Howard was on stage making jokes about how people are like, oh yeah, people say our games are kind of buggy. Uh, and then Fallout 76 releases, and it feels like, hey, they're not listening to criticism, <laughs> and more so than it was, you know, kind of a cheeky, you know, laughing at themselves kind of moment. And I yeah. think people are going to be really, really paying attention to how they talk about um, these things, because um, that, this is a point I saw somebody else raise. I'm, I apologize, I can't remember who it was, but it says, you know, Bethesda kind of seems to have not realized how much competition there is in the open world in open world games these yeah. days. Um, they're still kind of in the mindset that you know they're the top dogs and Rockstar is like the only other um, you know game in town. When there have been so many developers that have been doing a lot of different and really cool stuff um, within that space. Um, so I so like I, I I just wanted to make this point real quick before I kick it to Derek and then we'll move on. Um, I'm just I, I don't understand why this wasn't. Uh, like Fallout Online, you know, like you know, we've got Elder Scrolls Online, and I just I feel like this would have been much better received had it just been a standard MMO type game, uh, like Elder Scrolls. I mean, yeah, it would have been you know fucking par for the course. It would have been just a meat and potatoes game, but I think honestly that I think I think that's the Fallout game that that people wanted. I mean, I, I but would it, it wouldn't be out right now if it was because it would no, require it more work. Yeah. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. Um, but I also agree with Jake. I, I I feel like this was an early access game that was released at full price and. And it's it's biting them in the ass. Um, uh, Derek, real quick, uh, what do you think about the future of Fallout? And then we'll, yeah, we'll move on to Rockstar. So here's the thing: Fallout generally is a brand is fine. Um, I agree with what especially like Reb and Finn were touching on, which is Bethesda is the brand that's in trouble. Um, and it's not necessarily immediately in trouble right now, but. A, I want to make the point that Bethesda as a brand may not have been as powerful as everyone assumed it was for the longest time i mean if you look at like the arcane developed games right which is not internal like bethesda game studios but like that's not a distinction that a lot of general players are making um prey and dishonored 
did not do that well. Uh, Dishonored 2 flopped, Prey flopped. Um, you know, Skyrim has done well on its infinite re-releases because it's a proven product. Fallout 4 did solid because it was Fallout already, but kind of lost a little goodwill. Fallout 76 is hurting that further. And I think Starfield is a real concern. Um, and I think the problem is that Fallout 76 flopping the way it has and being as as bad as it is has created major problems for starfield um because now trust in bethesda as an overall brand is hurt just that little bit more so if starfield doesn't come out and it's like way better right like it's cleaning up it is not it, it is gonna have to remove all of these bugs and quirks that have been around in first party bethesda games for a very long time um and it's going to have to get major good positive word of mouth over social media and through reviews. Um, and if it doesn't, if it's lukewarm, I, I worry Starfield is, is a one and done. So I just want to point out real quick that like with that fucking blue light, you, you look, look like the elusive man or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you're, like smoking. I you're can't, like a bad I can't replicate villain. Martin Sheen's voice, but... You're like a bad '80s villain, like sitting in his lair, like with that with that fucking blue light in your face. You just need to have a hairless cat and just stroke it. No, no, you know what that you know no but you know what we that can light talk is? about our plan to remove Bethesda from the games industry. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, that was an extremely delightful deep voice. That's really I, good. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, that was a that was a good Martin Sheen impression. I'm like, I'm impressed. Not even Martin <laughs> Sheen. It was just Jake, Jake is Jake is sweating down there in the corner. <laughs> like, Lord have mercy. Hmm. All right. Well, I think we beat the. Uh, I think we probably beat the uh, Bethesda horse. Uh, and now we move on to the next topic. And now I you know what I the actual horse. <laughs> you know what I will. I will, <laughs> I, I will just say that I'm jumping back in six months from now. I made it a point. I'm gonna jump back in because I, I think the bones there are good because the bones are a Fallout game. I, so, and I already bought it, so might as well hop back. Yeah. In. Right. Like it's, it'll. It'll be that. I think that'll be the most interesting thing. Um. Yeah. Is if they continue to support it and how it changes over time. Because yeah, we've, like seen, said, no man's we've, seen, like, we've seen so many games pull off pretty crazy um, 180s that oh, yeah. go from rough launches to really beloved games this generation. So yeah. Yeah. it'll be fascinating Ubisoft to see where it goes. To. Ubisoft is the king and Rainbow Six Siege oh, is yeah. the poster boy. Yeah. We're turning it around. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and we will move on to the next, uh, the next uh, disaster. Uh, that we're going to talk about, which is uh, Red Dead Online and some of the, uh, I don't know, there's, there's uh, again, there's a lot to unpack here. So uh, let, let's start with gold bars, right? Like, 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 so, so right off the bat, has anybody here actually played Red Dead Online? I, full disclosure, I have not. Okay, so, mm -hmm. J, all right, so Jake has. Seven hours so far, because it's like my seven. job, so. You have like seven gold bars right now? Uh, n n no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so, Okay, so, so when I say gold bars, here's what I'm talking about. And I'm, I'm quoting an article to give them credit from uh, IGN here. Uh, the Red Dead online beta has started rolling out with owners of the Red Dead Redemption 2 Ultimate Edition able to jump in first. Although microtransactions aren't live just yet, Rockstar has, con has confirmed that players will be able to buy gold bars at the in-game store. If you don't fancy reaching for your wallet, one gold bar could take you up to eight hours to earn. In a post de Jesus. In a post detailing what to expect in the beta, Rockstar states, you may notice some areas of the in-game menus are not yet accessible or available during this early period of the beta, such as the Red Dead Online in-game store, which will eventually open up to provide the option of purchasing gold, gold, gold bars to directly acquire cosmetic items like camp decor or a special style for your weapons. The good news here is that it seems that the gold bars will only be used to acquire cosmetics. The potentially bad news for players who don't want to fork out any cash is that it could take a good while to earn even one bar. Um, and yes. uh, and then so this Reddit, so like this guy on Reddit, right? Like he actually worked out how long it would take you to earn one of these things. So he said, play it around four hours yesterday. You need to get 100 nuggets to do one gold bar. You get in between 0 0.02 and 0 0.04 uh, uh, nuggets from series, deathmatch races, et cetera, which each take 10 minutes or less. Assuming you always get 0 0.2, I'm sorry, uh, uh, 0 0.02, and there's no loading time, it takes 50 games, which is 500 minutes to get one gold bar. That makes eight hours and 20 minutes, and that's assuming you get the worst nugget reward and you always reach the time limit. Um, yeah. 
so uh and then there was uh, one more user I'll, I'll quote him real quick he said i played for se about seven hours today doing nothing but the stranger missions the main story missions gang hideouts and one or two open world events i now have 0.87 gold bars at this rate on a very rough basis of calculation but based off my own play style that i consider pretty grind worthy i'd have to play basically 40 hours a week for three weeks to unlock a decent horse wow yeah so so yeah. Jay, can you talk about your experience with with, with uh, Red Dead Online a little bit? Because it, it yeah. sounds it, it sounds like I'm preaching to the choir here. It so I have like one point, like one point one gold bars. That's it. <laughs> oh, uh, and I've bra I've browsed around like the shops and like looking and seeing what's locked off. What can you know? What can I buy from the catalog with gold bars and stuff? And it is pretty grindy. It also like, and I'm not excusing it, but it's like the same thing with. Grand Theft Auto Online, and it was why so many people yeah. complain about that, and why some people embrace that grind, but me and a lot of people not really jiving with it. I don't got, I ain't got time for that. You know, I really don't. Um, I'm yeah, happy that name Jake Shark Card Baldino. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Come, <laughs> come to me for all the shark cards. Uh, it's uh, what are they going to be in this? What are they going to call them in this? Bar horse cards. Horse cards. Bar horse clay. Cards. Gold bar clay cards. Get it. No, that's aces, aces and eights. No, they'll call them aces and eights or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like some cowboy thing. Yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, grind intensive for sure. Uh, even just the regular cash, the in-game cash, takes a lot. Plus, you have to level up your character, so you have to be able to unlock being able to even buy certain guns in the store, uh, not even with the gold bars. So I think the progression, there's, there's potential for the progression to be more to chew into than the single player version but it's just so so like walled off by grinding that it's a, that, it's a little unattractive that sounds anti-fun like like that's the game's like, otherwise yeah. really fun negative like, it's, fun it's so fun i like stood in the middle of black water and i was just punching men uh, <laughs> anyone like i found this good guy. <laughs> that's, like a wednesday night. that's like a wednesday night for rebecca i'll, I'll send you a game <laughs> He's like, I stood in the middle of the town square and just punched men. So what? I, is that I, what you I think found a Wednesday a... night looks like? <laughs> I found two guys, like, walking the streets, the main street. There were two players. It was like the Fallout story, where it's like people embrace the character in the game. Uh, two dudes in trench coats, just walking up and down Main Street. And anytime an, an actual player came into the street, maybe to visit a shop or something, they would just rough them up. So um, they did that to me. And I was like, like what? Don't, oh shit. I mean, that sounds a lot I, less positive than the story example we got for Fallout. <laughs> I was like, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not going to take this. So I just took out my gun and uh, solved that yeah, problem. Yeah, they could have been walking up to you to offer you like 56 grenades. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> well, they walked up to me with a fist. They came up to me and started hitting me. That's so I tried to, like, I backed up and I was like, get away. And I just blew them away. It's a good time. It's, it's a great video game. <laughs> So, so you know what this reminds me of? Uh, this deal. Uh, um, by the way, hey, God, can somebody explain the horse insurance to me? Okay. What is the fucking no, horse insurance? Okay. No one can I, explain that. I, I, so I've done a bit of research on this, and also after we're done talking about Red Dead a little bit, there's a, a microtransaction situation in Black Ops Four I want to talk about because yes, I think yeah. it's, I yeah. think it's, um, I think that's really interesting. Yes. Uh, while we're talking about bad monetization models. So the horse insurance um, is Rockstar taking a page out of Konami's book. Uh, Konami uh, was the first person to offer anything. Uh, no, they're, they're the first ones to offer anything like this that I've heard. But um, in Metal Gear Solid Five, uh, you know, you had your base in, in Metal Gear Online, and mm -hmm. other players could raid it even if you were offline. You could pay fifteen dollars for insurance to make sure. It was like fifteen dollars a month. I think it was oh, like a subscription like some fee or something. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Lord you could pay for insurance to get your um, to make sure that you got your um, resources reimbursed. Holy so shit! Red Are you Dead. Serious? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Red Dead Online. Natural um, stuff. Uh, Red Dead Online, uh, like um, like with Metal Gear Online, has horse insurance because just like in the main game, your horse can die. Yeah. Um. So. 
um, since you're going to be, you know, playing against players and stuff, you can insure your horse to yes. uh, make sure that you get it back. And I believe it costs five gold nuggets. Fuck that. Two, or to be five, fair, sorry, five, five gold bars. Nuggets two, are the... Oh, smallest. shit. I thought you were <laughs> five gold nuggets, and I was like, it's not too bad based on what we're talking about. No, five about. gold bars. Five gold bars. <laughs> I love that. fucking cues me. I wish Derek <laughs> had been drinking something right there. We need a good drink spit on this podcast one night. Like, just oh, some take... So just, just save somebody... it. Save it for when he's in the Wario costume again. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Wario spit so, yeah. Okay, so you know what this all reminds me of, guys? This reminds me of my time with Sea of Thieves, right? I'm going to shit talk Sea of Thieves for like 10 seconds here. Oh, no. I, 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 I enjoyed my first night of Sea of Thieves, but all that grinding for for like like I, I get what they're I get what games like this are trying to do, right? Like like you're grinding for cosmetics because you know everybody's going to be on an even keel, but when you compare the games like Destiny, where I've dropped probably fucking 600 hours into Destiny, like some ridiculous number, right? But the grind there, but I become more powerful because of the grind, right? Like and, and like I'm I'm get Derek, what are you? <laughs> Derek's Derek, what are you... now. Derek, okay, <laughs> hey, why not? Right? Like, it's, sure, go with it. This this is such a weird fucking podcast. But like, Derek, like, Derek's the sheriff of microtransactions yeah. right now. <laughs> Derek, I can't fucking concentrate. Please, like, please I'm, I'm begging you. Okay, thank you. Every I'm trying to talk and I, I keep looking at you. <laughs> but but it, it, but this remi- this reminds me of yeah and and so I want to point out yes uh, Sam uh, who is one of our new mods uh, by the way. Uh, Sam Tolbert in chat points out, yes, at least Sea of Thieves still has <laughs> microtransactions. That's true, but you're still grinding to get cosmetic, you know, cosmetic items and nothing else, right? Like mm-hmm. that's that's the whole point of the grind. And without that gameplay loop of character progression, it just doesn't come across as all that appealing to me. Um, and I get that the core gameplay is fun, um, and, and you know, it's I don't know. There's something about Red Dead Online that just really puts me off. It's one of those. It's another one of those instances where I just have no interest in playing it whatsoever. Um, but uh, what is the actual? Do we know the actual price of buying a gold bar? No. How much does it actually cost? Rockstar has said that that store is not online yet because they're still tweaking the economy. Thank and God. Um, yeah, yeah, thank God. Um, yeah. Because there are horses that cost forty-two gold bars. Um, yeah, if you yeah. want the Arabian horse, it's forty-two gold bars. Does it just look nice? Or yeah, it oh, it's real fast. It's real fast. Oh. I have I have that horse in the main game, and it's extremely quick. It's it's a cool horse. Yeah. But yeah, like the amount cool of horse. like, uh, the amount mo- like sick that- horse, bro. Sick horse. <laughs> With Thanks, what bro, the- I spent three hundred hours grinding gold bars for it. <laughs> <laughs> With, like the way the way it's set up now is like you can't grind that out you're paying money for it so yeah and they've also said that current progress probably won't carry over i have a feeling they're going to kind of redo everything with the economy based off of I, feedback but now now i really want to play this just to walk up to somebody who's grinded and grinded and grinded for that like, sweet ass horse, horse. Shoot the horse. Like, what, if, like, what if they forgot the horse insurance like they didn't grind I, that, that's what i'm saying insurance. that's what i'm saying i want to find somebody with a sick ass horse and just walk up and be like it's a nice horse man sick horse bro and then just i do believe you have to pay, you have to pay up uh you do mr have to pay negative up. The horse killer. I am the horse killer. <laughs> what a badass. Oh, wow. <laughs> Killing horses. I've killed. This summer. <laughs> they will. <laughs> you gotta, do, you gotta do it with your fists, though. You've gotta, like, yeah. fist fight a horse. You want me to fist? I'll tell you what. I'll, 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 Go to the town square to start punching men, punching horses. I'm gonna I'm gonna tweet something out tonight, and if it gets a thousand retweets, I will fist fight a horse. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Don't, 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 you will not follow through on, John. You will not fist fight a horse. You're not so, gonna. I feel like punching a horse is like punching an armoire. Like. It's like you, should, you probably shouldn't do it, right? John, like, you're gonna punch a horse after you the day after you cancel this podcast. It's like punching probably. furniture. Yeah. I'm gonna be so angry about the podcast. I'm gonna punch a horse. So, I, I, no. So here's my question. Here's my question. Can you write a bear? No. Can you write a bear? Not, Not yet. yet. Fuck Not yet. yet. Definitely. Yeah. You can write a bear in Breath of the Wild. So, so, so here's you can you you can write a bear in Breath of the Wild. I've tried it many fucking times, Rebecca. You can write a bear while on fire, John. I have not been able to write a bear in Breath of the Wild. I've tried it and tried it, and the bear just won't fucking have me. There's literally it, one bear in the game. Like, the it's bear really won't hard. have me. The bear won't. It just doesn't. <laughs> the fucking bear just doesn't want me. It doesn't want me. 
Um, but yeah, so like. Oh, he asked the bear to prom and it turned me down. You know what I think they should do? Here's what I think they should do with Red Dead Online, right? Like, does, who here played Undead Nightmare? That was oh, one you, of the. Oh, best. you know they're going to do it. Oh, dude, put that shit online. Yes. Put that shit online. Just fucking go ball. You know what? Because I feel like Grand Theft Auto Online was like, whatever. Okay, it's just people running heists and fine. Red Dead Online is basically like that, but you're in the Old West and you're robbing trains instead of, you know, you know fucking shootouts and you know in the you know whatever but throw some fucking unicorns in there throw some sasquatch in there get a little a, stupid yeah I mean, throw some zombies in there if like there's not a skeleton horse then what the fuck even let me oh, you know people would whine about realism john no no fuck that fuck realism let in me ride game in where you can bring your horse back to life if you have enough gold bars no, <laughs> let, let me ride into let me ride no the horse, horse company just reimburses you with another horse <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not the same horse it's not the same emotional value it's, it, it, it's like <laughs> clone wild western wild west cloning tech for in your breath horse. of the world you in breath of the wild you can resurrect your same horse I just want to. I want to. I want to. I want to trot into armadillo like a badass on, on a unicorn. I want to trot into armadillo on a unicorn and just like tip my cap to some some like lady on the you know on the porch of the Grand Old Hotel. And be like, ma'am. You know, Mister Negative. Like unicorn bonus. rider, horse I'm, puncher. I'm a fucking. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> like I. I am the fucking unicorn rider. You can you can put that on Twitter. I'm I want to look like. Writer. I want to play Red Dead Online and look like the cover of a Meat Mo album. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Negative, Unicorn Rider, Horse Jake, Puncher, Woman Jake, Inspector. Jake. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I also do have another question. Um, with like, with um, you know, we how women around these parts. Rustler. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody actually says that to Arthur Morgan at one point in the story I, of Red Dead. I'm not even joking. Like somebody basically says that to Arthur Morgan. I've got problems. Um, I, I've but got... Um, I'm curious. I'm curious as to. I mean, clearly there's probably going to be changes. Um, oh, this is yeah. technically the beta, but yeah. I do, and like I just know like GTA Online was kind of like the fantasy for a lot of people that play Grand Theft Auto. Which is um, weird. It's like, man, I want to rob yeah, a no. bank and do but, drugs. But like, I mean, I, it's not my thing, but I, I get that. <laughs> but I get that the, like, that kind of like crime fantasy is a big thing. And I'm curious as to if they'll be able to generate the same kind. I mean, clearly not the same kind because it's not, Red Dead's not going to sell like GTA, but I know like, what Justin meant, but now I'm just thinking, like you know, oh, I've got so many fantasies about committing crimes. Like, just, I don't why know why. Is the <laughs> cowboy? <laughs> I, I don't know why. I now just want to play some. I just want to play some Grand Theft Auto. I, I, I just want to rob a bank. <laughs> now, I'm in, now I'm in fucking cowboy mode. I, Justin, please. But yeah, me, well, so sorry. basically, what I, what I, what I, what I'm asking is like, um. You know, from what I've heard, the shark cards and stuff are pretty egregious in yes. GTA Online. I'm curious as to if the people that would be playing Red Dead Online would be more or less um, accepting of something like that. I, I think know. that's the big question in the long run. I, I, I would like to point out to Reb that Dio in chat says Breath of the Woke. So I just, <laughs> that just makes me fucking Dio, laugh. Dio, my heart. Oh, Dio. <laughs> Dio, Dio, Dio. Thank you. So, I gotta be honest with you guys about something. I bounced pretty hard off Red Dead Redemption 2, and I'm not sure I'm going back. Um, the I, idea never appealed to me. I just... Eh. I, I haven't had much to talk about in this conversation. I haven't even started Red Dead Redemption 2. Like, Jake, I'm assuming you finished the game. Mm -hmm. um, it's very long. It's like, it is, yeah, it's, like, it's, it's really like long. too long. The, the other day, like, Zach was like, Okay, I'm almost done, and then I broke to him at a point uh, in the yeah. story he actually yeah. was at in our chat, and he it still had like a third him. of the game, the th a third of the story yeah. left to go. Yeah. It, it broke him. It broke yeah. four different people in that <laughs> chat. It was like John, <laughs> Zach, Maddie, and uh, I don't even have the epilogue done. The epilogue is multiple chapters and and multiple. That's not that a is... fucking epilogue, then. I know <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. that's, the yeah. epilogue is straight up game. Like, that's a quarter of the game. Yeah. So, Jake, this is interesting. Jake, this is actually really interesting, Jake, because I know a couple of people who finished the game. They were telling me, without spoiling anything, the epilogue could have been a fucking D expansion, a DLC. 
yeah. that they release early for the game because they're like it's literally fucking ten hours long. Well, that's I know what it is, cool. and I'm very aware of what it is, and yeah. I appreciate that it's in the game. Yeah, uh, it felt very much like wow, dude, wow, you really like overachieved there. Like you guys really did. Yeah, apparently but, work but, yourselves but, into the into the dirt because there's this was like, unnecessary. too much game there. Right? It's a bit much, yeah. So, and, and I think there's an interesting conversation there when you talk about the working conditions at Rockstar and you talk about the fact that they were grinding on this game for, what was it, what, what, what was it, like 100 hours a week they were saying at one point? Um, that was one of my biggest problems. It, it, it turned out with Red Dead Redemption 2 is that I feel like the immersion and the detail in the world actually took me out of the experience at many times. Um, because at the end of the day, like, if I, like, I want to be a cowboy, okay? Like, I want to I want to get on my horse and ride out in the sunset and be like, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 woo! You know, like, I just, I want to... Look, that's just what I do. Look, okay. <laughs> whatever. You know what the yeah, fuck I do. Okay? Yeehaw. Yeah, yeah, you fucking ye- 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 Yeehaw. There you go. That's yeah, I get on my horse. I'm like, Woo! But uh, that's I, all the other cowboys beat me up in, during lunch hours. So. <laughs> but they but take yeah, a no, like, pint of chocolate milk. I they do. They. <laughs> Those chocolate Ringo, milks are so good. Yeah, I went. Home, I went home that night. I was like, I was like, Mom, Johnny Ringo took my whiskey. Like it was, it was really, it was really sad. That sounds no, like that, my Red Dead character. <laughs> His name is Ringo Jones. It was you all along. No, but that that was that's one of my big problems, and I was I was shocked at my reaction to it because Red Dead Redemption remains one of my favorite games of all time, and John Marston is one of my favorite protagonists of all time. Um, and so I was really looking forward to Red Dead Redemption Two, and I got to the beginning of Chapter Three. And at this point, I was like 20 hours into the fucking game, right? And I was like, okay, well, how many chapters are there? And I looked at the, I, there were there were six chapters, with like a 10 hour fucking epilogue. And I was like, yeah. I 10 I, low ball in it. I, yeah, I was like, I don't know if I can fucking do this. Like, and I'm sure I'll, I'm, I might you go gotta, back to it. You gotta, it's, especially considering you love Red Dead, the original Red Dead Redemption, so much because you get a lot of Dutch context that, for me, reinforced the original Red Dead Redemption a lot. Yeah. Red Dead Redemption 2 is re- a really interesting game for me because overall I really enjoyed it, but I also have a lot of huge problems with it mm-hmm. that yeah. I think in other games I probably would have sunk the whole thing for, for me if the highs yeah. hadn't been as high as they were. Um, it's a really fascinating game because somebody could tell me that they absolutely hated it, that it was their favorite game ever, or anything in between, and yeah, that would make sense. Mm-hmm. Like, it's... It, it's an it's a really interesting level of quality, and I think it's really fascinating to see what people think of it, because um, I've seen just such a variety of reactions to it. Well, let me ask. So I've got one question for Jake, um, simply because Jake, you've been around the industry for a while. Um, I'm so tired. I, I know. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> soon, soon you can rest. Soon you can rest. <laughs> Wait, that sounds really, really morbid. Never mind. I, 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 take, I take that back. Um, with Red Dead Redemption 2, so, like, I know that the meta score for the game, and meta scores don't mean much, but the meta for the game was a 97, mm-hmm. which is extremely high. I think it's the highest rated AAA release this this generation. Um, do you think that if this were any other game, it would have got, or, or do you think, do you, do you think because it's Red Dead Redemption any other 2, studio. people were willing to overlook some of the some of the flaws of the game simply because they were so excited to be back in that world, which I don't, but, which, by the way, mm-hmm. I don't find fault with at all. Um, because there are there there are games that I I know that other people would probably rate lower, but simply because I am so I am so happy to be back in a certain world, or I am so immersed in a certain world, I'm like it, it doesn't matter to me. The game is fucking amazing. Um, but it's but like playing the game, like it still had all that old Rockstar jank that yeah, we're all yeah. used to. Like it plays like a game from 2010. Literally, it plays like a game from 2010. Uh, it plays like Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah, and 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 I just I I don't feel any evolution in the gameplay at all, and that that docked it a huge deal in my mind. But I I wanted to see what you thought. The yeah I don't I don't know because I well, I did like the first impressions video, but I haven't actually spoken completely critically about it in like in like you know a video or anything. Ah yeah man, hard questions. I I feel like it yes, does feel old. It, it does feel old. But yeah, I it it was a, a it was that type of game for me where it's just a big triple A game. It looks incredible, and I want to get lost in the woods. Um, and I feel like, regardless of who put it out, I still would have enjoyed it that way. I I don't know I don't know if I could say the same for other people if they were like oh rocks or yeah. a rock star game eat it up. 
Uh, but I can say specifically because it's a Western, and we don't have a lot of Western we games don't. like that. We don't. Finn, what's up, man? So does that mean, uh, Jake, that you would support my petition to bring back Gun? Oh, Ooh. hell yeah. You yes. can blow up horses with dynamite Yo. arrows. Interesting. Give me yeah. Gun 2. The gun Interesting. Gun. Bring back Tom Jane. That, I love that man. Oh, Thomas he, Jane is the fucking man, dude. Yeah, like, I forget, yeah. he played the main character. And he like, did. Thomas Jane is a good cowboy. Like, although he was yeah. a Native American, and like, the the character in Gun is a Native American. Right? He was like half and half. I half and half. Yeah. 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 Man, that shit was good. Gun was. Oh, and uh, speaking of good older games, by the way, it has nothing to do with Red Dead Redemption. But if you've never played Kingdoms of Amalur, that shit is on uh, Xbox yeah. One backwards yeah. compatibility today. Go fucking play that shit because yo, is that damn. An amazing. Is game. that the Kurt Schilling game? Is that yeah? The yeah that's the one that like bankrupt <laughs> Rhode Island or something. Bankrupt the studio. But you know what, dude? That when you say it like that, I, die, I guess to get into me, I, I don't know, but. It was. It's a great fucking game. You should go play it. Go support that game because play that please. instead of Dark Siders Three. Yes, no, please. Sorry, sorry. sorry. I, no, please. I agree. I've heard nothing but, like, like, uh, so Maddie. Uh, uh, Maddie is doing our review for Dark Siders Three. He's like most of the way through the game now. We got our review code kind of late, um, but uh, he loves it. But I've, I've, I, I haven't heard great things about it. He said, he said um, it starts off really, really good if you know what you're getting into for like Dark Siders, yeah, but then it starts to fall apart towards the end. Yep. Um, which that's, I mean, that's kind of the Dark Siders arc, to be fair. All, all <laughs> yeah. both of the first two really yep. fall apart towards the end, so that's just threat. to be expected. Yeah, but, I actually but, have a question for Jake. If we're done, the Red Dead topic. I think we might have. Yeah, I think we probably exhausted yeah. it. Yeah, go ahead, Finn. <laughs> so it, this is a question about you and your actual work at Game Ranks. Uh, you know, just just to make you feel special. Oh, no. Who are are you the one? Are you the the model of the man behind the before you buy this? Is that you? Yeah, I've always me. wondered that. That's a photograph of me. Uh, that's just a screenshot of me doing a random video. So that's actually like year one of Game Ranks, the videos, the website. I don't know, but um, they're like separate. But the YouTube channel, like that's that was me in my basement in front of like a piece of wood plywood that i bought at home depot that i painted white um and like a crappy <laughs> suit i got from goodwill and um yeah and i'm actually wearing no pants in that screenshot like you don't know because you can't see it oh, but <laughs> you're gonna below that. wearing no pants right now i was no. like no pants mm. definitely okay. Answer, i'm not flexible i can't oh. but uh yeah that's you that's can't me. pull like a woo Ow. Yeah, no. That hurt. Yeah, please don't do that. Ow. You okay, Derek? You know, because no, you know, I've always been wondering because every time you guys release the video, it's the same person with a different face photoshopped on top, and I was always curious the origins to that. Yeah, so, it's it's funny because people rip it off, and I could be like, you know, that's not wanna, my likeness, but eh, I don't care. I, I want to point something out real quick. We have a riddle in chat from oh, Retro no. TG. He says, here's a riddle for all of y'all. I am something people love or hate. I change people's appearances and thoughts. If a person takes care of themselves, I will go up even higher. To some people, I will fool them. To others, I am a mystery. Some people might want to try and hide me, but I will show. No matter how hard people try, I will never go down. What am I? You're Ego. obviously, you're obviously my, my Witcher 3 opinions. <laughs> oh, clearly. Ego. Yeah, it's got to be Ego, right? Yeah. Is it Ego Retro? Is it Ego? By the way, welcome. I, I'm not familiar with who Retro TG is, so welcome to the channel. Appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. Yeah, I really appreciate that. If it's ego, let us know. Um, so it's, I, it's age. 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 Uh, you know what? Oh, nice. That's good. That's that good. is good. That's yeah. really Ed, Edward Nigma over here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ed Nigma. I like that. It, uh, Retro, welcome to the channel. By the way, dude. Uh, are, uh, and answer me this real quick, Retro. Are you a longtime listener and a for, and a, a lurker, or are, are, are you new here? Uh, but we'll go ahead and uh, we'll move on uh, to one more quick topic, and then we we got we had some questions for Jake that we received on, uh -oh. on Twitter, so we'll ask those. Um, surprise topic for you guys! Surprise topic for you guys! Ooh. Real quick, we got the Game Awards coming up. What the hell was that? That was Saki. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I thought that was your dog whining for a minute. Oh hell! <laughs> I was like, jeez. Um, okay, so anyway, uh, we got the Game Awards coming up next week. Um, so retro is new. Retro, welcome. We appreciate it. Join us next week. Um, there are supposed to be 10 new games revealed mm -hmm. next week. Let's go around the horn real quick and do some predictions before we get into questions for Jake. Can I take the easy mode? Is it Metroid Prime 4? So I'm, I'm, no. going to, I'm going to start. I'm going to start. 
I think we're going to see Metroid Prime Trilogy HD on Switch. Reasonable, yeah. Reasonable I, expectation. I, th- I, th- I think it's time. I yeah. So I know for a fact the game exists, and I think it's time. Yeah. Well, I agree with you just because we know Metroid Prime 4 exists, and Metroid Prime Trilogy being a remaster is still like a fun announcement for a show like TGA, yep. but it's not such a giant show that they would need its own direct. I think, I, I like, let me... Yeah, that's a good point. And it's a fan pleaser for core audiences who care about stuff like Game Awards. So, and I think, yeah. and I think Metroid Prime Four is a is a a holiday 2019 game. And I think an early early 2019 Metroid Prime trilogy on Switch would be a good way to bookend that. Be like, hey guys, Metroid's back. We're all super excited. Here's three of the best Nintendo games of all time right, to to get you ready. I would love to play those again. My oh goodness. my god! Oh yeah. yeah. In oh, HD, yeah. a beautiful surround oh. sound. Let's go. Metroid, like, Metroid Prime, like what an exercise in atmosphere oh. that game was. Like I can't, still, uh, I'm getting shivers. The first game is still my favorite game. Ever. Oh yeah, no, Metroid Prime, guys, is literally like in my. I mean, it's one of my favorite games of all time. And it, like, I mean, you guys know me. My my two genres are Metroidvanias and um, your genres and, and JRPGs. My genres, my genres. John's John's genres. John's genres. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I, I love the Metroid games, and I love them not just because they're intuitive and fun to play, but that sense of isolation, that sense of being alone, and like you know the whole world is against you, just you and it's just Samus against everything. I fucking love that. And Jake, I I agree. Like the oppressive atmosphere in in Metroid Prime is just so fucking thick you could cut it with this with, oh Sorry. so good that, that moment when you first step out into the fendrana drift oh, i was gonna say yes. fendrana drift yes. Yes. and the snowflakes oh. on your visor oh, yeah no. and the music or, oh. or how about or, or how about that uh that was lightning flashes when you see samus's reflection in the visor mm-hmm. like oh my god first time going to the dark world in two yeah oh, oh. It's good that oppressive atmosphere oh, so good anyway i'm gonna be so disappointed now when it's not announced next week <laughs> 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 but, but way, i believe um, I to preface all of this, uh, obviously the Game Awards is going on during our normal time slot for our show, so we're going to oh, do nice. a live, um, live thing of the show. We won't do any of our faces up on screen or anything. We'll just do um, a mirror of the Game Awards, but with our commentary over it. Uh, and and we have, do we do we have our our guests we, joining we us? Have, we have we have two special guests joining us. One is Sam Tolbert and Chad. It's a tradition at this point. Sam always joins us for the Game Awards, and we also we also have Reed Albers. Who's going to join hey. us? Uh, yep, Reed is going to join us for streaming the Game Awards next week. He's a a good friend of the show, uh, formerly of the ESA, and he's got some he's got some cool stuff cooking uh, in the future that I can't talk about right now. But oh Reed is Reed is oh, ooh intrigue SDGC intrigue. But Reed is a cool dude, and he's going to be joining us for our Game Awards stream next week. And I, that, don't ever do that thing with your eyebrows ever again, Derek. It's weird. I don't know why, but I don't like it. Do it again! I don't, I don't like it. Again, Jake, Derek. Jake, why don't you throw us a prediction for the Game Awards next week? Uh, I do. I don't want to be a parrot of the chat, but uh, D-O-M-F uh, says what I was thinking. Uh, maybe we'll get that glimpse of uh, an Avengers game. Yeah. Ooh. The, yeah. the Avengers game that Square Enix had teased well, hey, and then disappeared. The uh, Russo brothers. They, they teased it. Yeah. Yeah. They teased. Oh, they they originally they teased are. the Avengers game. Why didn't I like go? Last, God. last January, and then they're like, "We'll have more in 2018," and it's almost getting... December. Yep. <laughs> so, if we don't yeah. see this Avengers game at the Game Awards, then so, I think that's a sign that something's up with development. So, yeah. I, I, I think Jake's spot on because the Russo brothers are going to be there, and and Greg yeah. Miller actually predicted that we're going to get an Avengers trailer. Uh, an Avengers 4 trailer. No. 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 Keely, Keely would no. be singing that from the rooftop yeah. if, if oh, yeah. he Avengers had gotten something too, like uh, that. The, the Avengers it's 4 too trailer much. is too big for the Game Awards. I'm sorry. But, that's not. Yeah. <laughs> but the Russo's yeah. introducing a trailer for the Avengers game. Yeah. Absolutely. God damn. Just I wish I went. I, I, I wish you I, I wish you'd gone too. Um, but I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm glad you're here. Um, Thanks, man. But uh, just as a quick plug, uh, since I mentioned Greg Miller, anybody new in the chat, I did co-host Kind of Funny Games Daily with Greg Miller in San Francisco a couple weeks ago. So please go to the channel and look for that. Give him some love. Okay. Um, and uh, so, all right, so good. the Avengers. I think that makes sense with the fucking Russo brothers being there. I think that's like that's yeah. A- why else would they be there? Be like, hey, yeah. Bye, uh, yeah, we made it here. Thanos is going back to Fortnite, guys. That's what we're yeah. going to talk about. One more yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Derek, why don't you throw us a prediction, man? All right. Um, so this is one I haven't seen going around, but I think it's a, a reasonable one. Um, Pikmin 4. 
So Ooh, Pikmin 4 love. has been in that phase of like almost done for how many years now? Five years. Has um, it really? Yeah, yeah. Pikmin 4. Yeah. It's been like Miyamoto thing. said Pikmin 4 was close to close to being finished before the Switch was even yeah. revealed. What? He was like, yes. I love this. Coming. So this was, I think this is like Pikmin 3, right? Pikmin 3 was moved to the Wii U. Um, it, after like it, I think it gotten almost finished on the Wii and it spent a long time in that end of development cycle probably with a very small development team on it just to kind of clean it up add a little more into it clean it up and I think it was decided like hey, let's just move this over to Wii U um, I think it's probably what happened with Pikmin 4 as well I think it might have been like an end of life Wii U title that got kind of revamped and moved up and improved to the Switch um, and it's probably been working on like a skeleton crew till it's ready um, I am personally of the opinion that that happened to Animal Crossing as well. I think so too. I think so too. From from what little buzz I heard, that's about right. But um, but so Pikmin Four, I think it's been what like four or five years since we were told it was almost done. It's been um, a while. But it's also like right in the middle of. I think core fans will like the announcement. It's not big enough to be like an E three blockbuster announcement or a direct headliner. Um, so this is a good like little piece of red meat if they want to announce a new thing right not just a remaster then pikmin 4 is like bayonetta 3 in terms of it's not a huge game but it's a good middle of the road kind of announcement to make i'd be uh, at something like the game yep. awards so i think that. pikmin 4 is my guess so will will rebecca give us another nintendo prediction or is she going to go in a different direction i'm actually going to pass um you pass i you know something Half of it is because I haven't really, like, I know Jeff Keighley's just been dumping all these announcements for guests all over Twitter the last couple days. I haven't been following them, so I don't have a super, I haven't even really been thinking about it. Like, I didn't even realize there were going to be 10 new announcements. But, yeah, the other half of this because I didn't too much. <laughs> yeah. How much do you want to see some Animal Crossing, though? I, I, I we won't. I don't think That will be a direct but, 3 reveal. Yeah, That's too big. I agree. It, it will be, but if uh, if if we do, even if I have my mic muted, you'll hear me screeching <laughs> like oh, yeah. across the country because be, I'll be so gonna be happy. So good. I'm gonna like cry when I, I finally see free. Isabel. Like, I'll in hear her. you and oh, Jeff in stereo. Oh, my I God. screamed would be of rage. Jake, what was that? I said forget about it. I would freak out too. I love Animal Crossing so it's much. So good, man. It's the best. All right, Finn. What about a prediction for next week? Um. I've got two. <laughs> <laughs> what? Saki! Saki knows what's up! Oh, that was perfect. That that's was amazing. Perfect. No, Finn, For those of you who missed it, Finn, Saki said Finn, we get married. Finn, that's your prediction right there. That's, you yeah, don't, don't ruin it by don't don't ruin it by actually giving a game prediction. Just I let the man give a game prediction. All right, fine. 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 The game awards will be going on during our rehearsal dinner, so I'll have to unfortunately be missing them. So I'll have to live through all of you. Un <laughs> oh my god! In that, in that the game awards could have been on a different day. Ben, not so the excited. Ben yeah. was getting married Freaking next. Freaking Jeff Keeley scheduling them on top of your wedding. What a jerk! Yeah, he god. was getting married next week, but I guess he's streaming the game awards with us now. <laughs> it's unfortunate that this less important thing is what he's trying to say is happening during one of the most important moments of his life. That's yeah. what he's trying to say. Yes. No, oh, I right. think, dog, dog. I think uh, Rocksteady will tease their first game, their next game. Uh, we'll get a yeah. trailer. Mm. Mm. Do you think it's going to be that Superman rumored, no. rumored Superman game? No. Because I I trust Jason Schreier and his uh, oh, did he, investigation. Did, did, did he drop something today? I missed, he I missed said it was not a Superman game, that it was a team-based game and a games as a service. No, mm -hmm. but, whatever. Oh, Justice League, maybe? Maybe Superman's in it, and that's where those rumors... It could be Justice League, but if it's games, it's... Fucking Suicide, Suicide Squad. Suicide. <laughs> no, 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 fuck that. For that. Jeff Grubb on Twitter had it right. Jeff Grubb, give us fucking Mystery Men the game. Yes! Ah, <laughs> oh, the, sh the shovel man and the fourth guy. Yeah. I, I shovel well. Yeah. I shovel and very well. And secondary prediction is that Xbox uh, stealth drops below Oh. Night. Oh, Okay. I could, yeah, all right. I mean, they did claim it's still a 2018 release. Yeah, yeah, it's get, it's getting down to the wire There's on that. Very one. little 2018 <laughs> left. So I predict it drops the night of the. It's going to be that year's Game Awards, and it's available tonight, and it'll be on Game Pass. Okay, all right, that's a solid prediction. And uh, Justin, what about you? Uh, let's see. Um, 
Kojima show is gonna show a Death Stranding trailer. I think <laughs> that's a pretty I safe. I don't uh, believe it. We were all thinking it. Seventeen you were seconds of new gameplay. <laughs> I don't in the wasteland. Then they're gonna kiss. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, do, you, do you think we're gonna get gameplay? I don't think we're gonna get gameplay. <laughs> No, we're not gonna get I mean, we got gameplay at E3. Oh, yeah, we did, yeah, yeah, did we? Did we? Gameplay is, is walking. Yeah. We still it, don't we... know what kind of video game. Kojima doesn't fucking know what kind of video game it's gonna be. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a PlayStation 5 game, I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be the Breath of the Wild, it's gonna cross release. Yeah. No, that's but, it's, exactly it's coming out, but it's coming out in what June, says June. Walmart Canada. Yeah, well, according to Walmart yeah. Canada, it's coming Walmart out. Walmart Canada's June. legit. I mean, they've got They really content. are. Like, did you guys. Did you guys I, I, tweet I'm, from... I'm actually expecting. I, I think that Walmart Canada listing was just a joke because Keeley called them out yesterday. <laughs> that, was that was great. It was good. Um, but Justin, uh, no, but actual good. actual prediction, I think we're going to get like a big trailer for Bayonetta 3. Ooh, that's a very good one. They announced it. They they announced it last year at the Game Awards, um, along with the remasters of one and two. Yeah, Um, we haven't haven't seen we haven't seen it yet. Platinum's usually pretty quick in their development cycles, Um, and I think that's something that you know is a really good target for you know Game Awards audience for um, Nintendo to show off. So I I think we'll see something from Bayonetta three. All right, I got so, another one. If uh, if we if we can go for seconds, I do too. <laughs> right. I actually remembered something. Let's go, let's <laughs> right. web first. Go ahead, and then we'll okay, get. Okay, I the- is it? And this is like me trying to remember something that I saw on the internet like a week ago. Is it Yoko oh, Taro working on something? Is is he? Yoko Taro's got to be working on something. Yeah. But I saw somebody say I, that's what I'd like to see. I want to know what he's doing. Mm. Yeah. That'd be great. And the, game, the game awards would be the kind of like weird place where try him he, out in the mask. Like yeah, yeah. Like I, I could see oh, him. Yeah. I could, I could see him coming up on stage at the game. He awards. takes the mask off. It's Hideki Kamiya. He takes the Hideki Kamiya mask off. It's actually Yoko Taro. Like <laughs> and nobody I mean, knows. I don't, I don't know anything what about that. Yoko Taro actually looks like. That's based on nothing at all. That's based on me seeing someone tweet about that and me yeah. thinking, yeah, that sounds nice. So I, that that means nothing. All right, Derek, go ahead. Mortal Kombat 11. Oh, that's a, a good, good time to play. Mortal sport. Kombat yes. 11 yeah. is already yeah. well past. So Rocksteady has followed this very, very clear schedule that Rock- they've been very comfortable with. Where you mean one- Nether Realms? Do you mean Nether Realms? Nether Realm. Wow, yeah. I'm thinking Warner Brothers teams, and we were talking about Rocksteady and the Superman yeah. thing. My bad, y'all. Um, but uh, Nether Realm has fallen in this very comfortable rhythm of one e3 they reveal a game. And then, you know, by like one year they reveal a game, by the next year, yeah, they, they reveal out expansion, reveal out expansion, basically. They're, they're on these nice four year cycles. It would have been time for them to reveal Mortal Kombat 11 at the C3, and they were even teasing it, and then it, it didn't show up. Um, and it's not, there's no word that there's development problems. And a studio like Netherrealm. I don't believe that they would have real development problems. They're a very, very well-oiled machine at this point. They're very good at what they do, and what they do is in a very comfortable place for them. Um, so I and think there have been a lot of teases, right? Yes, like nothing, nothing like teaser videos or promo stills or yeah, but like they've been teasing that they are oh, yeah. right, right, right. So what I think is happening is a, it's it's very possible two things. A, Mortal Kombat 11 is a step up from. Injustice, Mortal Kombat 10, Injustice 2, like that kind of level where their games have been in some regard. Um, Or B, it could be possible that they've just wanted to condense their reveal process. Um, You know, Injustice 2 and Mortal Kombat 10 had a very spread out, like year long reveal process of characters and modes and information. Um, And that worked, but they also have made it kind of clear that they, they, they like how like later on as Injustice 2 got closer to coming out and they were revealing things more often, people were much more excited and they really enjoyed that. So I think the marketing cycle is gonna be shorter for Mortal Kombat 11 because they like being able to show new characters and new things off more frequently than if they would have if they left themselves that year, assuming they're still on the schedule. But anyway, Mortal Kombat 11, I think very safe bet. All right, Jay, go ahead and give us one more and then we'll move into some questions from Oh, uh, I changed my mind. Uh, I. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> I debunked it in my head, so that's fine. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Okay. Well, everybody speculates on that. 
we will. Uh, we've got some questions for Jake from uh, from Twitter, uh, and the first one is from. I th I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher the pronunciations for some of these. So just a warning to if you're listening, I apologize. Emil So Trill, uh, at Emil So Trill. Uh, question: Do you feel Cyberpunk 2077 has the potential to challenge GTA for King of Sandbox genre? It's kind of a broad question, but uh, no, because it won't ever have the as great as it can be. It won't have the mainstream appeal that Grand Theft Auto has. Yep, it won't be able to like not not to be not to speak in absolutes, but I just don't see it like conquering that by any means. I think in terms of pushing things, I think what it can do is push uh, storytelling, similar to how The Witcher did. Uh, in terms of how side quests were interesting and well written and fleshed out, uh, but in a game, you know, a more a more game the style of like you hop in a car, you drive around, you shoot men. You know, like yeah. we, we've had it with fantasy. We've had that el development in fantasy, and I, you know, a little bit more expansion in that in a more free roamy action crime game would be cool. I feel like if Cyberpunk allows you to ride around on a unicorn. <laughs> that could have some serious potential we're like, like we're halfway around. there yeah like that that's a step in the right direction uh not g not at not g not asks on average how much game time do you clock before posting before you buy and how does it change with game genres uh oh how does it change with game genres that's interesting i usually obviously like i i very much express that they are first impressions that's what i always intended them to be from the beginning uh, when we started making them, I got the inspiration from... I like Giant Bomb Quick Looks. I really oh, like the way they did that, but I just wanted them to be shorter and a little more condensed after like a day or so of, you know, looking at it. And uh, But I will always try and get as much as I can. And I basically do the reviewer sprint anytime I get a game anyway, so I kind of just play it for straight work hours. So usually I can get a good amount of the game in, uh, if not the entire game. Uh Genre wise, it's different though. There are some games where you, you know you just get a grip on it easier. You see all the features, you know, certain types of uh, you know, like like a WWE type of game. Like yeah, I can I can take a look at that and be like, all right, I, I know what this is, and what I'm here for in this example is to outline the new features and stuff. Like hey, yeah. WWE 2K19, um, it's still not the Nintendo 64 games, but now the character <laughs> creator is better. So like some some things are easier, but uh, then there's all the hard stuff hits at once where it's uh pokemon it's it's red dead it's spider-man it's a million other things i i can't even name off the top of my head because my brain is that fried but uh it's fun it's always so much fun yeah Definitely i mean I, 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 one you know clearly it's going to take you longer to to come to a consensus on a game like breath of the wild for example than say yeah. like you know uh axiom verge or something like that yes so yeah so no that's a great question that's a that was a really good one yeah uh, Derek, I just dropped the next question in chat and uh, in the uh, Discord chat here. Why don't you why don't you go ahead and take that one? I, I don't want um, to be asking. That's me. difficult unless I want to minimize my window. Okay, well, never mind. Uh, Justin, what? what? Uh, am I reading this question yeah. correctly? Yeah, read it. Yep, read it. Uh, I and what what is written in the chat is what the question actually is. Yes, that is okay. the actual question. Okay. Um, this question is from Daniel uh, Rusnarzik, um, and it is, why is pizza always on him? <laughs> why is pizza always on you, Jake? <laughs> That's a good question. That's because <laughs> I, uh, it's because I literally don't know what I'm doing. That's why. Uh, the, for, the, for those of you guys who don't, I don't expect you to watch my videos, but I always close out with, um, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Pizza's on me. Of course, I'm saying it way more tired than I would normally say it. But uh, <laughs> that was just my, like, oh, I'm, I'm doing a YouTube thing. I have to have, I'm from, like, the old guard of YouTube. So I'm like, oh, you have to have a cringy um, outro catchphrase. <laughs> and uh, that's like what it. we came up with. Uh, a, a, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't, I just love pizza. And I love talking about pizza and enjoying pizza. And it just was a natural fit. So it's a good passion to have. So I, I, I think, you. I, uh, Rebecca, were you going to say something? I was going to suggest that we not ask him a particular question. No. Which question is that? We're not going to get into it. Because we get oh, into no. it every fucking episode. Uh, yes. No. Okay. I know what you're going to oh, yeah. oh, yeah. No. no. We're not asking that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, at, and by the way, I feel like a good alternative, uh, uh, Jake would literally, the next time you do a video, literally have a pizza on you. 
like literally like strap a pizza like, to your chest. On your head. Pe like, pizza's on me. Literally, yeah. No, <laughs> no I'm gonna wear like a toga. Like <laughs> you should wear a toga. Or just, like, <laughs> just rub it on your chest. Like get like a nice slice of like pepperoni and mushroom and rub it. Like you know, be like literally the pizza's on me. Pizza's guys. on me, and I go oops, oops. and then it cuts to black. <laughs> if you guys think for one minute I'm not doing this next week, you're fucking lying. To Mass I think you're not. So. Hey, uh, Jared, I, got, I don't think I'll be on the podcast next week. Yeah. <laughs> Jake, are you afraid to ever do like a game ranks fan meetup because you they might actually call you out and make you cater the meeting with pizza? You know, uh, that's people have. Yeah, that's actually the the next question is from at Neck Ninja. Am I ever going to get my pizza? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Like, uh, literally, like it's a thing that people have have when I I have the, the, the the good fortune to be able to like meet people that watch my stuff sometimes. Awesome. And uh, people will always like bust my balls about it. Be like, hey, where's that pizza? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, ever, you ever tell them I've literally never been asked that before, man? Like nobody's ever asked me where the pizza is. Yeah. You got me. Like we, that was we, the we, first time. I, I've kicked around like trying to get into packs with a backpack that has a bunch of frozen pizza in it. Like I freeze pizza in New York, right? Driving up to Boston, that's not that far if you think about it. <laughs> um, so I bring the good pizza to Boston. No offense yeah. to Boston, but uh, yeah. And then like every time someone, I'd be like, "Hey, here you go." Just like here's a frozen piece of New York pizza. You just in a Ziploc you know, bag, like yeah, it's like all so, fucked up. Jake, we're gonna be at <laughs> Tees, so you know, holla at your boy with the pizza. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, at Mister Underscore Faku asks will there ever be a pmi reunion oh my goodness i don't that's a wow that's a this is a big question this is a juicy question i feel like a lot of people would want to hear that i never acknowledge um i don't i don't know i mean we're all we're like none of us hate each other so it, it might be a thing it's just kind of like the band broke up because one person wanted to do a solo album one person just kind of got tired of the whole thing one person wanted to go move away um so there's no reason for it not to, but pretty much it, PMI has, has its own new thing now that is way cooler than what I thought we ever had with it. So it, it was like where I got my start though, it was where I got my gig. Like it was like my first internet thing doing pretty much it. Uh, it was kind of like a like a movie, video game, talk podcast yeah. show on YouTube. And uh, it was where I kind of was like, I can do this. Like, this is something I want to do. Like, I'm comfortable with myself. Like, I'm com comfortable at the time being like a 19 year old who would spend all his money at his part time job at, at Toys R Us on like action figures and just enjoying this whole thing, this whole talking about things that we love. And like, I realized that I could try and do that for a job. Uh, so I'm always like really grateful for that. So I would fucking totally do another PMI. Not, I wouldn't bring it back, but I would do like a one off. Yeah. You know? That'd be kind of cool, man. Yeah, like one, like one last like tour, you know. And uh, we've got we got one more question from at many Sean, and this is a neat question. I like this question. What is your least favorite game? Oh wow, that's never the question anybody asks. So it's always what's your favorite game? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. That's so hard. Ah, I always like try and block out talking negative about games. That uh, yeah, I don't know, man. What games do I not like? Shit. I'm on the spot. I should have prepared. I I don't know. Don't don't No, it's not it's not any Final Fantasy game. Not even Ten Two, which I think is fantastic. Um Alright, maybe not fantastic, but pretty great. <laughs> uh, Hot takes better than the original ten is. That, yeah, no, I'm on board with that. I'm on board with that. Oh, alright, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> oh, <it's> <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait to hear my Final Fantasy XII opinions. You probably oh, won't. I don't. Oh, jeez. Oh boy. Probably, boy, howdy. Well, uh, I, I guess the games I don't like are uh, 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 anime girl fighting games, just because I don't understand them. So you're not a fan uh, of Rumble hate... Roses. Rumble Roses is not your game, then. No. Or even yeah, yeah. That it's just a genre I've never gotten into. Not, not even a game I don't like. It's just a genre I've never really understood or gotten into. Just say big rigs over the road racing. <laughs> you'll, you'll always be safe. <laughs> I mean, the easy answer is always ride to hell retribution, right? I was <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to go for like the easy, you know, the easy. Oh no, you know what? Recently, just recently, in terms of games, I've had to do work for. Uh, I don't like Ark at all. I do not like. Arc. I didn't like it either. I don't like that type of game at all. It's just not for me. I'm not a big survival guy, and plus that game was ugly as 
butt. Like that that was one of the fuggliest looking games. And I'm using that a graphics guy, but that literally made my eyes hurt. It's disgusting. It was terrible. <laughs> it was, isn't that coming out on Switch too? I'm so excited to see I can't what it looks like. like. Can you imagine how ugly that game is going to be on Switch? Yeah, it's, it's like, going to be a, a copy of the uh, PowerPoint version. <laughs> it's, well, I wonder I, how City. Have any of you played City Skylines on on Switch? I heard that game is just a. Oh, it, has it got? I was like, there's no way. Like that doesn't. Make has sense. it gotten fixed yet? Nope. As, okay. as far as I know, no, nope. That, 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 yeah, I've heard some horror stories about City Skylines on Switch. Um, all right, well, I think that's probably uh, all the time we have tonight. Um, we'll do a little quick house cleaning. Um, don't forget, like Derek said, we will be doing our uh, Game Awards stream next Thursday with uh, our buddy Sam and Reed Albers. Uh, and it's the exact. Uh, what, uh, what time does that start, Derek? What time does the actual Game Awards start? Is it eight? I'd have to double check, and once again, it'll pop up on the screen for everybody. So I think it's okay. eight. But okay, yeah, I think it's eight too. So we'll be starting um, early. I also want to point out that you, uh, everybody you see here. Uh, all the SDGC members here, this is basically uh, our PAX team, uh, minus uh, Maddie, who's not here, and uh, Re Rebecca may or may not be there, um, but the rest of us are going to PAX. We're getting our media passes, uh, so we got our we're, nice. got our media passes to PAX uh, settled. I did, I'm a bit disappointed, and I will give him shit for this, uh, Jake, but I didn't see any Tom Johnson or, or Andrew in the chat tonight. I know. Um, I know. Very disappointed. Very, especially after all the shit posting I've put into uh, Game Ranks every Tuesday uh, at four. I expected a little shit posting here, and I, I, I didn't get it. <laughs> you know what I think their problem is? Is that they spend all day with me. That the last thing they would want to do. They're just sick of you. Like that's yeah. you're done. Like yeah. You can't take any more Jake. Yeah. Well, well, also like Tom has been on this podcast so many fucking times now that he's probably like whatever. I, if I want to be on the podcast, I'll just be he's on. an all pro. He can just like walk in. He gets, no, he's got an open door. Tom's got an open door here. Um, and uh, we got some more cool stuff coming up for the podcast. Uh, Derek, uh, do you want to talk about when we're going to release uh, part five of our Final Fantasy, Re Final Fantasy Retrospective? Should be Saturday. Um, Saturday? Yeah, we, we need to film a new batch of those. But yeah, we got we got the Final Fantasy V uh, Retrospective going up on Saturday. Nice. Um, on pre-recorded content news, I'm also working. I don't know why. I'm sorry. I have like an eyelash in my eyeball, which is I bad. Wondering. I was like, I was like, are we fucking boring you? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. You know, I have a big old thick feminine eyelash in my eyeball right now. Um, I'm also working on a video. Um, I, I wrote an article about game to screen adaptations for our Medium page, um, and I'm working on a follow up in the form of a video about the Monster Hunter movie. Um, spoiler alert! I'd very much it's, like it. it's significantly less positive than my article was, because <laughs> the article was about all these things to be excited for, and I very specifically left out the one thing that is going to be a blight. Um, and and it's I, I promise it's going to be actually like reasonable and not just things are bad because I hate Mila Jovovich. So you know. Um, what else do we have going on? Maddie's got his Dark Siders review. He's he's updating as we go. Um, I'm working on the Smash Switch review, which I can't start till it comes out. Um, yeah, that's true. What else are we working on? And we, got I, a, we got a pimp. I will say this: uh, we have one last thing. Uh, when when we record um, our part six for Final Fantasy Retrospective for Final Fantasy VI, not only will uh, Rebecca, I think you're going to be joining us for that one, but uh, Natalie Flores from RPG Site. <gasps> oh, yes. oh, 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 oh. Yep. Sure. Yeah. yeah. He will be joining us. Oh, I, re I reached out I to her myself. Uh, so I, fi I Rebecca, that I, I figured you would enjoy that. Oh my uh, gosh! I'm so excited. I've never like actually talked to her. Like. Yep. So. She will join us for part six of our Final Fantasy retrospective. I think she's going to join us for eight, nine, too, actually. Um. So. Uh, so yeah. And uh, there's a lot of cool stuff coming for the podcast, and uh, some more stuff coming up maybe around February time frame that I can't really talk about yet. Uh, but. Uh, mm, Hmm. But um, uh, Jake, I would ask you to tell people where they can find you. But anybody watching this probably knows. Yeah. Uh, but why don't you do it anyway, man? Like, uh, I I'd like to say that the the best place you can find me right now is the Because Video Games podcast. That's a podcast I just do with my best pal. It's just two guys talking talking shit. It's, I tried to do like it's kind of like car talk, but for video games and movies and stuff. It's just two guys yapping. Uh, so that's Because Video Games one word on all the major podcast networks. I do that every week. And it's like my therapy, and I love it. That's fantastic. 
Well, Jake, dude, uh, thank you so much for joining us, man. This was a this was a real treat to have you on, man. But this was a breath of fresh air for me. Thank you guys for having me. Really, yeah, yeah. Like... get you away from Tom and Andrew for a little while. Man. No, <laughs> like, uh, he's, 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 okay, yes, all right, um, <laughs> all right. Well, guys, if nobody has anything else, um, as always, it's not always poetry, and we don't always agree, but we always keep it real. So we will see you next week for the Game Awards. Until then, please take care of each other. And I just wanted to say. It's great to be back and talking to all you guys again. We love you, Finn. <laughs>